All right, in this section we're going to learn about uh, how to find the length of an arc of a function, and then also um, what happens if we take that arc and revolve it about an axis um, and then find the resulting uh, surface area. So um, we have a couple of integral formulas here, and basically uh, this which integral formula we use uh, is determined by whether we have y given as a function of x or x given as a function of y. Uh, just be aware that, um, you know, if you have a dx integral, you know, if you're integrating with respect to x, you have to have x limits. If you're integrating with respect to y, you have to have y limits. Um, we're going to do a couple of examples. Now, um, here's a fair warning on this one. The setup is pretty simple. We're going to end up having to do a bit of algebra to kind of simplify and be able to integrate, uh, but it'll be pretty enjoyable at least, and, and will feel really satisfying uh, when we're done with it. So um, let's take a look, right? So they give us uh, a function of x, right? So we have y as a function of x. So we're going to use this top integral formula. And we want to find the arc length of this graph on the interval from 1 half to 2. So that would be like from here to here. So we're going to find this arc length. They give us the function. I'm going to first rewrite this function um, because you'll notice right in the formula, uh, take a look at this, that one of the first things we're going to do is we're going to take the derivative of the given function and square it. So I'm going to rewrite f of x in a form that will be a little bit more friendly for taking the derivative. We have a 1 sixth x cubed plus 1 half x to the minus 1, right? and this is going to make it power rule friendly. So uh, the derivative is, if I bring the 3 down, I've got 3 6 or 1 half x squared, and then this will be a minus 1 half x to the minus 2. Um, and we can factor out a 1 half. I'm going to go ahead and factor out a 1 half from this. So this is the derivative, 1 half times x squared minus x to the minus 2. Now we got to square this. I like to do this sort of uh, side work, or, or I like to do this sort of uh, front load a lot of this work so that I have a nice expression just to plug into the integral. That way I don't have to do all this um, algebra inside the integral. Um, probably still have to do a little bit of algebra. Oh, and that's supposed to be a square, not a prime. So we're squaring this all. 1 half x squared minus x to the minus 2. Squ squaring this. And of course, we, we could just square each factor. So we've got 1 quarter times. And then um, we're going to square x squared minus x to the minus 2. So I'm just going to FOIL that out. And when you FOIL this out, you have x to the fourth minus, let's see, 2 times x squared times x to the minus 2 is x to the 0, which is 1, and then plus x to the minus 4. So that middle term is just a minus 2. Now at the end, look back up at this integral formula, then we're going to have to add 1. So I'm going to distribute, I'm going to distribute the 1 quarter. So this is 1 quarter x to the fourth minus 2 times a quarter is minus a half. Uh, and then plus 1 quarter x to the minus 4. And uh, finally, if we add 1, That'll just change this minus one half to a plus one half. So this is what's going to go inside the radical in the integral. So let's set up this integral. We're integrating uh, from 1 half to 2. That's the interval they gave us. And then we have the square root of this expression here. 
uh, 1 quarter x to the fourth plus a half plus 1 quarter x to the minus 4 with respect to x. Now, just looking at this, this looks like um, not the most enjoyable integral. And in fact, at first, you know, it, there's no u substitution that pops out as something that would help us integrate this. So we are going to do some algebra to rewrite. I'm going to start by factoring out a 1 quarter from uh, the expression that's inside the radical. And that, is, that gives us x squared, uh, sorry, not x squared, x to the fourth, um, plus 2, plus x to the minus fourth. Okay, now we have this um, factor of a quarter in the radical, and that can come out as a one-half because that's a perfect square. Um, and then also, I would just like to point out uh, another thing. Um, note that up here, when we were doing all of our work, we found the derivative, and then we said, oh, let's square this. And we said, well, the square of x squared minus x to the negative 2 is equal to this expression, right? x to the 4th minus 2 um, plus x to the minus 4th. And the only difference between that expression and the one that we have in our integral right now in our radical is that this is a plus 2 instead of a minus 2. So uh, let's see, taking out that factor of 1 half, I'm just going to bring it right outside of the integral. We can see that that expression, x to the fourth plus 2 plus x to the minus fourth, is the square of x squared plus x to the minus 2 instead of x squared minus x to the minus 2. So that's a perfect square inside a square root. If you're scratching your head a little bit and saying, huh, is that really the case, just foil this out, right? Uh, multiply out x squared plus x to the minus 2 multiplied by itself. Um, and uh, you'll, you'll recover this expression up here. So now I'm going to rewrite this. Uh, we're take, you know, just simplify. I've got a perfect square inside a radical, so this is just x squared plus x to the minus 2. So after, after a bit of algebra, I mean, it, wasn't in, it was not unsubstantial, right? It took some effort. But after a bit of algebra, the integral becomes now a simple power rule integral. I'm going to move up here. Um, integrating, using the power rule on this, we get 1 third x cubed. And then this would be an x to the minus 1 over minus 1. So minus x to the minus 1 from 1 half to 2, and I'm just going to rewrite that um, to make it more convenient to plug stuff in. 1 third x cubed minus 1 over x, uh, 1 half to 2. So we'll plug in 2, 1 third times 2 cubed minus 1 half. And then plugging in 1 half, 1 third times 1 half cubed uh, minus 1 over 1 half is 2. And then we could uh, use the calculator to help us um, simplify the rest. So if we have uh, 1 third times 2 cubed minus one half that's 13 over 6 minus and then uh, let's see what do we have in the other expression one third times one half cubed um, minus 2 is minus 47 over 24 
And then I'm just going to put the rest of this uh, right in the calculator to get our final result. That will be a plus 47 over 24. So we got 33 over 16, or if you like decimals, you could write 2.0625. There's our arc length. So this one took a bit of algebra to do. Not all the problems that you do kind of require this much algebra um, to simplify, uh, but this was kind of a fun one to do. All right, so our next one, um, they give us... Uh, an equation for this curve um, and it's given so they haven't given us y as a function of x or x as a function of y we'll just notice that right away um, and they give us an interval now unless they specify otherwise this interval is always an x interval um, but I think it's uh, you know probably pretty simple to just get y as a um, uh, sorry, to get x as a function of y. So, uh, because then all we have to do is just take the square root as opposed to a cube root and adding one, and I think um, it will lead to a simpler uh, expression. So, I'm going to choose to get x as a function of y. So, uh, taking the square root on both sides, uh, the square root of something cubed, uh, that's the 3 halves power. So, we have y minus 1 to the 3 halves power. Um, now, if we're getting x as a function of y, then um, that means we're going to need to integrate with respect to y, and we're going to need y limits. They gave us this x interval, and if you use the equation, um, you can uh, convert that to uh, y limits, um, and if you do that, you'll get uh, y going from 1 to 5. So there's our g of y function uh, that we have here. Now uh, the integral formula says we're going to take the derivative of this function. So 3 halves y minus 1 to the 1 half. And the chain rule would just have us multiplied by 1, so I'm going to leave that off. Um, now we need to square this. Um, and squaring uh, both um, factors means we'll have a factor of 9 quarters times, and squaring the 1 half power just gives us something to the first. So we have 9 quarters times y minus 1. And then the, the next thing that the integral formula has us doing is adding 1. So I'm going to distribute that 9 quarters factor first. And then if we add 1... Uh, let's see, adding 1 gives us, uh, adding 4 fourths is a minus 5 fourths. And, you know, this is going to end up in a radical uh, inside our integral. Um, and I'm going to just factor out a, a 1 quarter because it will be convenient to pull out uh, that perfect square factor. So we have 1 quarter times... 9y minus 5. So this goes inside the radical, which is in our um, integral. right? So the formula is we're integrating from c to d, square root 1 plus g prime of y squared dy. So we're going to integrate from 1 to 5, the square root of this expression that we just found, 1 quarter times 9y minus 5 with respect to y. Definitely going to just pull out this factor of a quarter, not just from the radical, you know, it becomes a factor of a half, but then I have that constant factor of 1 half, and I'm just pull that right outside of the integral. Oh, whoops. Uh, 
Oh yeah, so we have the 9y minus 5 in the radical. I'm going to go ahead and just write that as a 1 half power because I think we have a path forward on this integral. Um, give it uh, some thought, maybe pause the video if you think you know how to uh, work this out before I, um, before I go ahead and say what I'm going to do. Um, this can be a power rule integral with a u substitution. So I'm going to let u equal 9y minus 5 so that, uh, whoops, so that du is equal to 9 times dy. We need a factor of 9 in here. And we can do that as long as we put in a factor of 1 ninth outside to compensate. Now we have 1 over 18 times the integral of u to the 1 half du, right? So uh, this here is du, this is u to the 1 half. Now I need my limits. The limits we have from 1 to 5, those are our uh, y limits. After we make this substitution, it'll be helpful to just translate to u limits using the equation u equals 9y minus 5. So when y is equal to 1, that's our lower limit, u is equal to 9 times 1 minus 5, which is 4. And when y is equal to 5, that's our upper limit, u is equal to 9 times 5 minus 5. 45 minus 5 is 40. So that means we're going to integrate from 40 to, uh, sorry, from 4 to 40. Those are our u limits. And that means that after we integrate this function, I don't have to go back <clears throat> and plug in the y expression. So integrating uh, using the power rule on u to the 1 half, we get 2 thirds u to the 3 halves from 4 to 40. I'm going to yank out this factor of 2 thirds. Um, and when you do that, let's see, 2 goes into 18, 9 times, and then 9 times 3 is 27. So we get uh, 1 over 27 times u to the 3 halves from 4 to 40. And now we'll just plug in our limits. So we have 40 to the 3 halves minus 4 to the 3 halves. Now, 4 is a perfect square, so that means that 4 to the 3 halves will be a kind of nice um, rational number. Uh, the square root of 4 is 2, and 2 cubed is 8. So we got 1 over 27 times 40 to the 3 halves minus 8. Now, if we want an exact answer, I think this is about as far as we go, because 40 is not a perfect square, so 40 to the 3 halves power is irrational. Um, so there's our exact uh, arc length. We'll go ahead and get an approximation. And we get 9.073. All right, so either of those is fine. Um, I can't remember if they do much rounding um, when you look up the results in, in the back of the book or on CalcChat. All right, so we've seen some examples uh, of finding arc length. Um, uh, now we're going to turn our attention to a surface of revolution. So if you take that arc that we might have found, an arc of a function on some interval, um, instead of finding the length, we could just revolve that whole arc around some axis, and you get this sort of hollow surface. Uh, and so what these integral formulas will do is tell us how to find the error of the surface. So just a couple of things. You know, the integrals themselves look very similar to the arc length formulas. Um, we use little s to represent an arc length and big s to represent the area. Uh, but more importantly, it's really easy, at least for me, to distinguish between the arc, the arc length and the surface area because... Um, the surface area says, well, we have to take into account a radius, right? If we're doing, if we're revolving something about some axis, there's some radius uh, that's going to be important. So that's why there's, 
this r of x or r of y factor outside the integral. Also, anytime you're revolving anything about some uh, axis, you're also going to uh, see a factor of pi show up somehow. So um, I think it's fairly simple to distinguish between the arc length and the um, surface area intervals. They both involve this same radical, right? So the 1 plus the square of the derivative inside a square root. We're going to do uh, an example of this. We're going to find the area of the surface formed by revolving the graph of f of x equals x cubed on the interval from 0 to 1 um, about the x-axis. So I'm just going to sketch this real quick. Um, on the interval from 0 to 1, uh, the graph of y equals x cubed is entirely in the uh, first quadrant. Uh, 1 cubed is 1, so it looks kind of like this. And we're revolving about the x-axis. It's really important to note what your axis of revolution is. That is going to determine um, what your radius is, what your the function that defines your radius is. So if I revolve just this uh, arc that we see about the x-axis, we get this kind of horn shape. Oops, use a different color. All right, so we have this kind of horn shaped. It's hollow inside, and we just want the uh, surface, uh, the area of that surface. Now, we have y as a function of x, right? We've got our f of x function. So getting the expression that goes in the radical we know how to do that, and we're about to do that, but also we need the r of x. Since we have uh, our f of x function, we're going to be integrating with respect to x. We need the radius given as a function of x, and the radius is always distance to the axis. So from our arc, from our curve, to the axis of revolution, this is our radius, and we just need it as a function of x. In this case, it's fairly simple. Um, uh, it's a vertical length, so that's top minus bottom as a function of x, and that's going to be just the, um, the function itself, x cubed. If we were revolving this arc about the y-axis, that would change our radius. The radius would then just be x, like it is when we find the volume with shells. Um, so you want to just sort of be careful about that. I always sketch if I'm doing, um, you know, I always want to kind of see the, the curve and visualize that axis because it helps me if I actually draw in and point to oh this is the radius it helps me get uh, um, you know avoid errors so our function f of x is x cubed if we uh, take the derivative we get oops, we get 3x squared if we square that and add 1 we get 1 plus 9x to the fourth. So that's what goes inside the radical in the integral. Now let's set this up. So the um, the integral formula looks like this. We've got 2 pi integral from a to b r of x square root 1 plus the square of f prime. So the interval they gave us was from 0 to 1. Our r of x is x cubed. And then inside the radical, we've got 1 plus 9x to the fourth. So um, now we just want to kind of see. We've done a lot of the hard part of this problem, right? We've set it up. This interval does represent the surface area, and now it's up to us to evaluate it. Um, so we need to figure out how do we integrate this as a function, um, and uh, maybe pause the video if you want to have a go at it first before I work it out. Um, this, uh, you know, we're pretty lucky to have that factor of x cubed. You know, if I look at inside the radical, I've got an x to the fourth term and a constant, 
and then I just have this x cubed factor outside. So this can be done uh, with a u substitution, 1 plus 9x to the fourth. And if that's, d, if that's u, then du is equal to, using the power rule, 36x cubed dx. And um, so I just need to put in my uh, a factor of 36 so that we've got our du. And then I'll multi uh, divide by 36 outside to compensate. And this becomes pi over 18 times the integral of u to the one-half du. So it's another power rule. Um, and then I just want my u limits. So um, if uh, x is equal to 0, u is 1 plus 9 times 0 to the fourth, and that's 1. If x is equal to 1, u is 1 plus 9 times 1 to the fourth, and that's 10. So we're going to integrate from 1 to 10 with respect to u. Um, now we'll integrate the power rule. This will give us uh, 2 thirds u to the 3 halves from 1 to 10. And of course, uh, you probably uh, can tell this is what's happening next, but of course we can yank that factor of 2 thirds out uh, just to simplify, and uh, 2 goes into 18 9 times. 9 times 3 is 27, so we have pi over 27 u to the 3 halves from 1 to 10. So we have pi over 27 times uh, 10 to the 3 halves minus 1 to the 3 halves. And, you know, as an exact answer, this doesn't get much simpler, uh, except to just call 1 to the 3 halves 1. 10 is not a perfect square, so 10 to the 3 halves is irrational. Um, so we can't really simplify what's inside the radical, but we can if we like. Uh, get a, an approximation oh whoops that's three halves all right so three point five six three now you know, we haven't, you'll notice I haven't put any units on the answers in this section yet. And that's just because we've been looking at these just as functions in the plane. There were no uh, linear units given, you know, on these axes, right? So um, if there were some linear units, like maybe if these uh, axes uh, were measured out in centimeters or meters, then this surface area would be in square centimeters or square meters. Likewise, the arc length would just adopt uh, the linear units used on the axes uh, when we graphed it. But these are just sort of given as abstract functions, and we didn't have any units.